reason for the season. If the other person did not respond well, turn to the other person and tell them, reason for the season. And that is the subject I was told to discuss today. The topic of the day is reason for the season. And if you, if you are keen enough, you'll realize that the Christ in Christmas, we are slowly removing Christ from Christmas. And Christmas all of a sudden has been all about eating, dressing, uh, parties after parties, gifts, and also about Santa Claus. And this is why we are saying that we need to go back and realize that Christmas, the reason for the season is Jesus Christ. Buona sifiwe. And in this sermon, I will, I'm going to explain to us why we believe that Jesus, why Jesus is the reason for the season. And I believe that we will understand it, grasp it, and run with it because the commercialization of Christmas has really affected this generation. If I, I, let me challenge us. Go and talk to your nine-year-old or six-year-old boy or girl and ask them, why do we celebrate Christmas? And then uh, the answer they give you will tell you whether this boy or girl understands uh, whether Christ is the reason for the season. I tried it with one and he told me, I don't know. I don't know why we celebrate Christmas. And so I had to explain uh, that Christmas, we are celebrating Christmas because we believe uh, that Christ was born uh, of the Virgin Mary and so we are celebrating Jesus during Christmas. So you can take that test, try it, and ask a child or a young boy, why do we celebrate Christmas? Then you will know whether we are on the right track or we've lost it. And then one, once you know the answer, you can bring them back to the knowledge of Christ being the reason for the season. I selected for my subject today the book of John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 18. John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 18 is our portion of scripture today. John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 18. Reason for the season. Praise Jesus. If you are there, say amen. If you are not there, say, wait, we are good to go. The Bible says in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 1 to 18, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, though through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was, in, he was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet all who did receive him, to, yet all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son, who came from the father, full of grace and truth. John testifies concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of, his, out of his fullness, we have received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. Buona Sifiwe. I chose this portion of scripture because I looked at what other authors had written concerning the birth of Jesus. And I saw this to be the fittest 
or the one I chose that the best suits what I wanted to bring forth. Simply because John takes us all the way to the creation story. He summarizes the creation story, the story of John the Baptist and Jesus coming down to earth in form of, in, Jesus coming in form of flesh here on earth, all of them in 18 verses. He has summarized the pre from pre-existence to the word becoming flesh in 14 verses. And that's why I chose this text. And so I will begin by giving us a simple summary, then I will do an overview of the, this portion of scripture, and then I will give us a few lessons, and then we will call it a day. So looking at the book of John, I believe that he first begins by telling us about the pre-existence of the word. That is in verse 1 and 2, the pre-existence of the word. Then he goes to talk about the work of the word, the logos, the work of the word in verse 3 to 5. Then he talks about the forerunner to the word from verse 6 to 9. Then he talks about the rejection of the word from verse 10 to 11. And then from 12 to 13, he talks about the acceptance of the word. And then in verse 14, he hammers it by talking about the word becoming flesh. Praise Jesus. So number one, the preexistence of the word. Verse one to two. John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was, in the he was with God in the beginning. John explains to us that Christ was the Lord, and Christ was God from the beginning. Before the creation of the world, Christ already existed. So he, he, he gives this argument, the Word existed before the beginning. The Word existed with God, and the Word was God. So he shows us that Christ is Lord and God. Number two, he goes to talk about the work of the Word in verse 3 to 5, saying, Through him all things were made, without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of the mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. He shows us, after introducing Jesus, he tells us the work of Jesus, and that is the work of creation. Before someone creates, they must exist before the creation. And so he's arguing that Jesus existed before the creation, and that is why he is God, our creator. So when we look at Jesus, we are seeing God because he is our creator. That is his argument, that this Jesus existed before the creation, but not only that, but he did the work of creation. And so Jesus is Lord and God of all creation. In him was life, and that life was the light of man. Apart from just being the creative one, if you look at the book of Genesis, you'll realize the world was dark and void, was in darkness and void, and yet Jesus is the creator of light in the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. So he creates, he becomes light, physical light, but also he is the spiritual light. Number, light. Number three, forerunner to the word. Verse 6 to 9, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. So John works as a forerunner. He is not the light, but he is a forerunner to Jesus. So he is introducing John. He has taken us from the context of creation and he has brought us here on earth, telling us that before Jesus came, there was a forerunner who went out. If you read the book of Matthew chapter 3 from verse 1, you'll realize in those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah. A voice is calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, for the Lord, make straight the paths for him. So John was preparing the children of God for the coming of the Lord. And even us, if we believe that Jesus came and we believe that Christ will come, we need to prepare. We are now the forerunners for the second coming of Christ. And so we need to go out, even during Christmas, and declare that Christ came, was born here on earth. He died and went, to, and went on the cross and rose again, ascended into heaven, and he will come back again. That is the message of Christmas, that Christ was born, lived, dwelt among us, 
And apart from that, he was crucified, dead and was buried, and he rose again. That is the message of Christmas. Then he goes and discuss about the, after the forerunner has, has given the word, then he discusses about the rejection, the response to the message of John the Baptist. The rejection of the word, verse 10 to 11. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. So after the message was preached, there are those ones who rejected the message, and there are those ones who accepted the message. So he goes and says in verse 12 to 13, the acceptance of the word, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of, of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. So John brings us to the message of the forerunner. Then he gives us the response to the message, that after the message was preached, there are those ones who accepted, there are those ones who rejected. But the good news is, in spite of the rejection, verse 14 says, the word became flesh. That in spite of people rejecting the message of John, the promise of the son was fulfilled. That shows you the faithfulness of God. That if God has promised something, if God has given us a message, whether we accept it or reject it, God will, ful will, ful will fulfill his word. So what lessons can we learn from this portion of scripture? Why is Jesus the reason for the season? Why is Jesus the reason for the season? Number one, Jesus is the reason for the season because he is God of all creation. He is the reason for the season because he is God of all creation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made. So Jesus is the reason for the season because he is God of all creation. And if you know that he is God of all creation, then you need to go out during this festive season and present Jesus to the world and telling them, Behold, I'm presenting to you the God of all creation, the reason why we are celebrating Christmas. We need to go out. Christmas is harvest time for us as children of God to spread the word and say, Our God, the Creator, came down on earth and dwelt among us. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 14, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. So Jesus is the reason for the season, because he is God of all creation. And so we need to go out and glorify the Lord, and call upon him and spread the message that we have a reason for the season. We must worship the Lord during this time. We must exalt his name. Let us not lose Christ in Christmas. We cannot afford to lose Christ in Christmas. There is a generation that is coming that does not know the meaning of Christmas. And let me assure you and tell you, if you are keen on social media, you will realize that a number of posters are going around social media and it is saying entry fee for men is 2,000 shillings and entry fee for, for ladies is free. Let's be honest. Indio. The poster is saying, for the men, for you to enter, you pay 2,000 shillings. But for a lady, for the young girls, you are paying nothing. It has been taken care of. And it is happening in our environment. It is happening. It is there. And you know those things are, the, 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 the venues are hidden. We don't know about them. Our children are involved in them. And we don't know about it because they are celebrating the festive season. Jesus being lost in the Christmas. And let me, let me tell us parents, by the way, if your son or daughter comes to you and says there is something in church, if it is not on 24th of December, 
from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Hakuna kitu ingine tunafanya. I know they come and they tell you, oh, Pastor Felix has organized, there is a bash, there is this and there is that. We always announce. So let's be warned as parents that our children have become clever and they communicate in ways we cannot see. But let us remember that we need to spread the message of Christmas that Jesus is the reason for the season because he is God of all creation. Number two, he is God, he is the reason for the season because he is God of our salvation. There is no other name here on earth or in heaven that we may, that we may be saved. In the book of, in, the, in verse 6 to 13 he says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. John worked as a forerunner. He was not the light. But, verse 12 says, Yet all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God. Jesus, because of Jesus we have salvation today. And the message of Christmas is Jesus is the reason for the season because he is God of our salvation. And we won't be ashamed of the gospel. In spite of anything, we won't be ashamed of the gospel. I won't be ashamed of my salvation, the salvation that God gave me, the salvation that I received as a free gift. We ought not to be ashamed. We ought to bring that salvation to the nation today and tell them Jesus is the Lord of our salvation. Luke chapter 19 verse 10 says, For the Son of Man came to seek and save that which was lost. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is, one one, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. And I'm trusting God that we will look at Christmas as harvest time. We will look at Christmas as harvest time, the time to spread salvation, that we will go out to reach out to many and tell them Jesus is the reason for the season. We believe that Jesus came and we believe that Jesus will come again. So let us go out, spread the gospel. If we eliminate Jesus from Christmas, if we eliminate Jesus, then Christmas becomes a useless day. Number three, he is the reason for the season because he is God in human form. The word became flesh, verse 14, and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. He is God in human form. To our children, to our children's children, let us introduce Jesus. Let us introduce Jesus. I'm giving you a challenge. Just go and talk to your children and ask that question. Why do we celebrate Christmas? Then explain to them before Christmas loses its value. Praise God. Praise Jesus. So he is God in human form. Verse 18 says, No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father has made him known. Praise Jesus that God existed in human form. And what we are, I'm trying to tell us, if you want to know who God is, just look at Jesus. If you want to know how God loves, just look at Jesus. If you want to know how God provides, just look at Jesus. If you want to know who God is, what makes God hungry, what makes God happy, what makes him angry and what makes him happy, just look to Jesus. You will have everything because he is God in human form. The word became flesh and lived among us. Everything, says boys, everything that can be said about God the Father, can be said about God the Son, in Jesus dwells all, with all the wisdom, glory, power, love, holiness, justice, goodness, and truth of the Father. In him, God the Father is known. So if you want to know God, look to Jesus, read about Jesus, understand Jesus, then you will understand who God is. Finally, he is the reason for the season because he is the promised Messiah. He is the promised Messiah. I know there are secular 
writings that try to prove there are other messiahs, but all of them have fallen short. The one true writing that is, has been proved to be true is the word of the Lord, our God. He is the reason for the season because he is the promised Messiah. Born from the, of the tribe of Judah, Genesis chapter 49, verse 10, compared to Luke chapter 3, verse 23 to 33. Born of a virgin, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, and Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. Descended from, the king, from King David, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 7, and Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, and 6 to 17. He is the seed of the woman in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel, says Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. When there was enmity, when sin crept into the world, God declared that there will be an enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. But he promises he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. And at the cross, Christ won it all, fulfilled that which was promised in the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. So let me end with this. If God promised in the Old Testament that Jesus would come and Jesus came, and God has promised that Jesus will come again, I am 100% sure that he will come again. Jesus is the reason for the season. We cannot afford to remove Jesus from Christmas. And it is up to you and me to go out and spread the message that Jesus is the reason for the season. We won't take Jesus and put, and put Santa Claus to replace him. We won't put gifts to replace Jesus. We won't put presents to replace Jesus, but we are going to put the presence of God to be there so that Jesus is the reason for the season. Thank you very much.